What's up, y'all? It's your boy Carcino here with the shirt that y'all love so much. <laughs> y'all don't even know this is an expensive shirt. <laughs> Everybody make fun of it. That's funny. It must be because people are young. But uh, this Hood Story Volume 58. And this is a tougher one than, than any um I ever had to do or ever done. Because I don't have to do them. But let's take you back to 2009. It's 2009. And, you know, we all got female friends and stuff like that that you know, they like play sisters and all this stuff, so. I won't be using names. But one of this, these girls are like my play sister, and, you know, we treat her as such. Me and others, you know, not just myself, you know, she's like the life of the party. You know, real energetic, you know, full of life always call you and you know crack jokes and it's like oh what's up big bro what's up oh i'm doing this and that you know just always checking on you genuine person uh big heart and all of a sudden one day out of the blue i didn't hear from her for like a weird like three days three four days went by didn't hear anything and it was unusual because this is somebody that I talk to like every other day. If I missed the day, I would hear from them the next day and just run down everything for the day. And I hadn't heard from this person in like three, four days. So I called like, what's up? And still like no answer. So I'm like, well, next day I'm going to drive by there. So I drive by there. And she had to let me in because basically, you know, where she's at, her cousin's at, you know, like, you can't, you can't, like, not open the door. You can see basically everything in there. So if people are moving, you can see it. So when I came in, you know, she kind of had her head down and sat down and was like, oh, what's up? Oh, no, I'm all right. I just ain't been well. And I'm like, like, well, like, why are you like ducking and running? So she went in the kitchen. I turn her around, and she look at me, and I swear I've never seen nothing like it. Even I mean, in a boxing fight, I've never even seen that. She had one side of her eye was like it was black and red and it had a scar like on the side of it. Her other eye had a scar under it and it was much worse. It was swollen and had a scar under her eye like this. I had and it was like, her face on this side was like completely swollen. And it, her eye was black. That's how dark it was on the inside. It was just black. And she just looked at me and she saw me look at her. And she tried to talk and she cried in her voice. And she was like, you're going to make me tell you exactly what happened, are you? And she's crying. And my body goes numb. It's like no blood is flowing through my body. I completely am numb right now at what I'm seeing. I'm like destroyed by just looking at this. That somebody would do this to this woman. So 
naturally I'm, I, I said yes you, you're gonna have to tell me exactly what happened to you and what had happened is she had told this guy she had been messing with that they may be having a baby and they got into an argument about that about having a baby because he, he was like I told you like to be careful and be on this I told you I don't want no kids and you want to trap me with a baby and the baby ain't mine and they get into a whole argument she's saying she don't even really know if she's pregnant yet or how many weeks or whatever she's saying that she might be and he just flipped out and just started beating her and stomping her and he ran away and he ain't been seen in like four days before she could even finish anything I was out the house in a rage <laughs> I was looking for this guy everywhere. Now, I'm the person that never fights, never get into anything, but I was going to kill him. And I found him that day. He was going to die. There was no even discussions or thoughts or anything about it whatsoever. He was gone if I found him. I had people looking for him. Like, if you see him, don't and call me. I want to be there. <laughs> I'm going to see him. He's going to see me. Before I'll be the last thing he see on this earth. But call me. I want him. So. We find him. You know, they was like. He's staying at his cousin's house in Indiana. So we had to drive all the way to Indiana. Got the cousin's address. And wait. We waited. And we waited. Waited and waited until we saw him. Once we saw him, it was okay. Time to go. Got out the car. Went to go see him. And it was like, uh, some man, we just, we didn't even knock. We just opened the door and came in. Me and my buddies that was with me. And they ready to just kick it off. I'm sitting there, he's sitting like on the couch. And he, man, I already know what I did. I know he wouldn't even look up at nobody. I said, man, look up at me. When we came in the door, the door wasn't even locked. His, his little cousin or little brother, whoever, he had to be like 10 or something. He was just there. And he just assumed we was with him. So nobody said anything. So that's how we didn't even knock when we got in there. And he looks up, uh, he didn't even look at him. He's like, man, I know why y'all here, man. I know why y'all here, man. I know, man. I've been praying to God, man. I hope I didn't kill nobody, man. Because, man, it was bad, man. I've been I've been a mess, man. I know, man. I know y'all. Y'all finna turn me into jail. She finna throw me in jail. I was like, she didn't go to the cops. I'm not here to take you to jail. This is finna be the end of you, basically, on, on this planet. So, you need to definitely tell me what happened and actually talk. The people that's with me is ready to just kick stuff off. They ready to just tear him into to pieces. And he started talking, right? He didn't, have, didn't want any kids. Because he didn't think he would be a good father. And he had a kid before. And his child died from sudden, uh, what they call that, uh, what's that, infant crib syndrome. He had a three-month-old kid. And he was watching him. He put him in the crib and 
the kid suffocated because he didn't put the kid on his back. He had him on his side. And and the kid ended up suffocating and, and passing away in the crib. Sudden death syndrome or something like that, they call it. Where they suffocate in the crib. And it traumatized him. So he never wanted to have kids again. So he he lashed out on her out of anger because he was drunk and she came at there, him and telling him this and she never knew this about him and he was so sorry about it but he didn't he never vented or never recovered from that because everyone blamed him for the death you know her, the baby mom she just snapped on him immediately because she was feeling the pain and the loss of the child but so did he too he had so much guilt because that wasn't his goal he loved his child and to have that happen was devastating to not just him and everybody kind of just forgot the fact that he lost a child too it was all about what the baby mother lost instead of what he lost too that was his son and it crushed him and he basically went away, you know, from that situation and split with her. And here it is many years later, he's with this girl that I know that I care about and is like a baby sister to me. And then this just happened. And this is like not his character. She says that. And he never even told her about like his past and had this happen. So... I decided not to even beat the man. I got him help. To this day, those two are married. They have two children. And nothing like that has ever happened again. So, on that note, a lot could be done from a conversation. There's never a point where violence is the only answer. You will be amazed how much a conversation could have saved everybody. Because I would have probably went to jail for a very long time <laughs> or some time away. So, you know, his problems would have been over. Mine was just starting. She would have felt the guilt of that. My parents would have felt the hurt from that. My family would have felt the hurt from that. Everybody would have been in a mess. All because of this incident. And no one took the time to listen to find out the reason why this happened. You know, it doesn't excuse what he did. And he took full responsibility for what he did. But she didn't want him to go to jail. She could have put them away. And they wouldn't have thought twice about it. They'd have just put, put him in jail. She wanted him to get help because she loved him. And dude is a genuine good person. And he proved he was the person that he, that he was. He's like, I've never done anything like this in my life. He just exploded. Now he has two two children right now. And he's raising them and that's why I don't want to use their name. But they got two kids. They're doing wonderful. Um, and I'm happy for them. But um, that's it. Violence isn't the only answer, so. Sorry, it's no knockout, drag out story for y'all, but this is one that was very personal for me. Now, if you don't mind, I will sit here with my tucked in shirt. My expensive tucked in shirt. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and uh, watch some television and cheer myself up. I'm out. Think, let me see. I want to break this thing. See? I knew it. One secure. 
All right. Sit here and watch some Benjamin Button. Old man who turned young. If I get old, I do not want to get young. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great night.